celebrating uh, Super Sunday here at Crufts is of course Gundog Day. We are celebrating the Gundog group, which contains some of the UK's most popular breeds, including the Labrador Retriever, the German Shorthaired Pointer, and of course, the Cocker Spaniel. Not only do many of these breeds make excellent family pets, each of the breeds has also been bred for a specific purpose as well. Gundogs is a group traditionally bred to accompany man in the shooting field, and as hunting evolved, people required dogs with varying skills. Four categories of gun dogs within the gun dog group and the different breeds within each group can vary quite considerably. Certainly each with their own attributes and uh, we'll be seeing of course in the group judging uh, a little bit later on this evening a little bit more about the gun dog group. I'm gonna hand you over to our handlers. First of all, please welcome John Bailey, member of the Kennel Club Field Trial Committee working his Spaniels and Labrador here in the ring today. He's been competing in trials for over 30 years and has made up over 24 field trial champions. He's also won the Springer Spaniel Championship in 2016. Let's hear it for John Bailey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Joining him in the arena for our display with the Spaniels is Roy Ellershaw. Roy is handling the famous Rick the first Columbus Spaniel in over 100 years to have won an any variety Spaniel trial. A fantastic achievement. And I'm going to hand you over to Roy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What I want you to do is just use your imagination. Imagine this is the bottom of an old woodland. There's bits of timber about, obstacles, bramble. The bluebells are just coming up over there. Hang on. I can hear a woodpecker pecking at a dead tree. So, just imagine that this is absolutely alien to him. So, what we're going to do is show you what makes a good working gun dog. Now we've got a youngster. You look at John, he's going nice and calm, taking his time, and away we go. We're just teaching them now to get into cover. That's it. Now, see, John, put the ball in. We train them onto tennis balls at this age. There's no game involved. And there she is. Now, there's no wind in here. What would happen normally, the dog would go the other side of the wind and come in on it. I'd find it much easier. It's so still and dry in here. So. Now he's not doing anything. This is so important because you've seen how exuberant the dog is and it's only young. We teach them to do, as we say up north, nout. For the southern people, nothing. So what he's doing is shutting that dog down. You'll see later on how important it is. So away we go. We don't want them running about all over the place. Because once they do go on game, they will naturally just pull out. All we want them to do is go and look, search, use their enthusiasm, and we harness it. Again, just stopping. Just taking his time. That little battery in there is switched off. And then we just switch it on again. Because He's going that well, this youngster. He's very pleased with it, with her. And uh, once they get on game, they'll go, they'll go for about 10 years. So we keep them off game when they're youngsters. Hello, I know you. Are you well? Very well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> An old friend of mine. I've not seen her for ages. Again, John just throws the ball. Now, the steadiness with keep stopping them, making them wait, this is the next stage. Yes. Bags of fuss, bags of fuss. That's 
That's the secret of training. Not all the time, but bags of fuss when they come in. Now then. The ball's gone in the lit cover. Just by the blue belt. Now then, that was another little add-on. The dog would have been expected to go for it, but he called him away. It's what we call a distraction. There she goes. How are we doing for time? How are we doing for time? Are we right, John? So that was John Bailey. A little meta. Again, young dogs, you don't want to overdo them. That was ample. Nothing went wrong. I've got everything crossed. The dog's happy. That's the thing with the... <laughs> When you go training, you want a happy dog. So now we're just going to swap over, and I'll fetch a dog in that's at the next stage. Still hasn't been on game. Uh, probably this season, be going on the rabbits later on. So I'll just pass you over to John. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as Roy said, he'll be fetching a dog that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, B, it's one that Roy bred himself, uh, out of his champion. Um, this line that Roy's got, it's, it's a very, very good line. Uh, I think he's in the top four or five in the country for dogs that have actually qualified for the championship over a numerous times. Of, um, so when he can find her, it's a little bit dark in there. With her being black, I think his eyesight's failing him. Uh, <laughs> we had brought some helpers with us, but I think they've actually gone on strike. Oh, no, he's, he's, <laughs> yeah, no, he couldn't, he couldn't see you. So what Roy will do, he'll go into the arena and he'll start and he'll just do another, another couple of stages with the training for the intermediate, a bit more and a bit more complicated than it was for the novice. So he'll do the same thing again. He'll sit her down, see how she's watching at him, absolutely glued to him. And that's what we want, that's eye contact. Everything's nice and calm. Just slips the lead off. Yeah, B's definitely enjoying it. Little wag of the tail there. Yeah, and ladies and gentlemen, these, these dogs that we've brought in today, they're, they're not used to coming into arenas. It's always in the field, you know, in the woods. You know, fetching them into this with all these people, lights and everything, it's, it's, it's alien to them. So they're actually coping quite well with it. And again, the walking around, just the steadiness, just for the dog to stay. Once he's gone around in a circle, he'll pro I think he'll start hunting her. Huh? I'm not just sure what he's gonna do. He often keeps me guessing like this when we're out training. Yep, there she goes, she's away. And see the, the difference, just with the difference of the age, she's more confident, straight away wants to go and look for the cover, hunting in for it. Not particularly looking at Roy, just getting on with the job, hunting around, you know. And and when you think, ladies and gentlemen, over the four days, the amount of dogs that have been in this arena and these dogs are still willing to hunt it, they're, they're doing very, very well. And that that there now is a stop. He's run the dummy back. Now notice it's a greater distance, like the stop whistle, you know that he's done for the dog, he's farther away, the dummy's farther, and he's centre. Distractions in the way, fences, brashings, and there's obviously a big, big, big distraction there. There must be a little piece of sausage in that. <laughs> no, no, I've forgotten what I'm doing there with that one, Dad. <laughs> That's a good girl, good girl. Like I say, ladies and gentlemen, you know, all, all the smells and the distractions for these young dogs in here when they're not used to it, it's a lot. 
So, but even though she got it a little bit wrong, she's happy. Yeah, and that's what we aim for. Plenty of praise, get the dogs to enjoy themselves. She's off hunting again. And just, when, when you're hunting down the fence line, it's, it's great for them. It just gets them used to jumping. You don't have to tell them to get out, get over. You know, they're quite confident in jumping all the time, which, <laughs> which she really seems to enjoy it as well. Yeah, and that's a distraction he's thrown in. Now he could well hunt her away or he could throw another dummy out. Yeah, he's asked her to leave it, hunting her down the arena now. And again, you know, even though she's hunted up that arena and she knows there's nothing there, there's, that's the second one out, that's a distraction. We send her back to the first one. No, oh, she's having that jump again. She's really enjoying that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely here somewhere. Did he throw it over the fence? Did you throw it over the fence, Roy? No, is it there? No, nearly, nearly. It, it, no, that's it. And with a young dog as well, even though she's enjoying herself, we don't want to lose confidence. Roy's walking forward just to encourage her. Just because the last thing we'd want a young dog to do is fail. So as she comes back, he'll just, he'll just show her where it is. And it's funny how she just seems to be catching a little bit of scent a bit further on than actually where the dummy is. No, no, still not keen. That's, there it is. That was the one B, that's the one we're looking for. Now, it's been a long time since he threw this second one out, so we'll see whether she actually has remembered it. Yep, yeah, right area, it's right area. There we go, it's in there somewhere. Go on, beat. Have a good look in. Push it around. It's there, go on, it's in there, it's in there. Yep. Yeah. There we are, she's got it. She's got it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See, and that was strange, when in this bottom corner of the arena, she held that a lot better there to find it, you know, as she did in the middle. So, like I said, just that many smells for these young dogs. So again, Roy just sits her, just shuts her off completely. So yeah, I think, I think Roy's just gonna keep her sat there now. Then hunt her back down the arena. No. That's it, I think, I think B's finished for today. We'll just pass you over to Roy and we'll, we'll come in with, I think the next dog in is a Springer Spaniel. Right, whoop, nearly blew your ears out then. Here we've got Springer Spaniel. Totally different, different characters. These are the beasts of the Spaniel world. Hard going, hard hunting. But still we need that off button. Where they don't do anything, they wait. And John will click it off, and you'll just see the difference in the hunting styles. You've got the cocker, this little merry hunter going in, going out, and they find stuff. <laughs> Springers disturb stuff. <laughs> and they just, 
They just keep going. They check everything. But you will find that Springers, they, they're so powerful that they do disturb game before they quite get there. They don't flush off the doors quite as readily as cockers. Cockers are sneaky, they sneak up on you. So out goes. Very good. That was a distraction, it remembered that first one, but it wanted to go for the, the second one. So it was good, just stop it, send it back. Again, we can only show you so much now. <laughs> that's what they think of your brashings. <laughs> but 80% of a Spaniel's gun dog work is hunting. 20%, it's not like a retriever. <laughs> very good, very good. Out goes a distraction. <laughs> Having a little creep. <laughs> Just check it. Now then, when we're in training, we do this a lot. We throw dummies out, throw balls, dummies, and then go and pick them up ourselves. We've got to teach these dogs not everything's theirs. It's, you go when I tell you. Now, if there'd have been any wind, and it was the other side, they would pick that like that. Well done. So now, John, with two minutes, I've got to tell him because we've thrown this together. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're like our spaniels. We're in the toilets working out what we we're going to do earlier on. <laughs> So the Spaniel is more a, a hunting dog that retrieves. At one time, they never used to hunt, they retrieve. And over the years, they bred them so that they, they retrieve. Right. That was stopped going for the other one. Well done. Wee! Put the brakes on. And you'll find with the retrievers, they like them to give a very good presentation and present it well and everything. With spaniels, if they get it back, that'll do. <laughs> they call it rough shooting, and it is. I've just got to work out what he's doing. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very good. As I said, you've got to imagine that a lot of the times they see roughly where it's gone and it's gone into a clump of cover, bramble, 
Marsh. Okay, Joe. Thank you very much. You've been a wonderful audience.